want us to pray, but I want us to pray for our country first. You hear me? I want us to pray for South Africa. Uh, to be honest with you, there's one thing that people, they don't know. South Africa, has, it has got the grace of God. And the devil will try everything to destroy it. Hallelujah. And, uh, you know, this week I was praying for our country. When I was praying, I saw myself inside the water. And I could see the water rising, rising. I said, oh God, what is happening? You know, from there I could feel the water come into my mouth. I said, this water will close my mouth. And if this water closes my mouth, I won't breathe. God said, oh, there are many that uh, they will be inside this water in this country. I said, God, let me stand up. It won't happen in the name of Jesus. Let me stand up and go pray. So now, to me, I was feeling like there's a very bad weather that is coming to us. And what is a sign of that? What is it that God is trying to tell us? Today, when I was reading the Bible, the Bible says, God punishes Israel because they, they are his own people. So when you see the punishment of God, it's not because you're a bad person. No, it's because God is trying to bring you back to the road. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You want to pray for our country before I pray for you? Yeah. But I saw water. I said, where is this water coming from? And I was sinking inside that water. I said, God, many must not sink. Many must not be killed by this water that is coming. And Jesus will prevent it. I don't know if you are hearing me. But we have to pray first before God can do something. You are ready to pray? I saw was bad and I was praying that God must intervene. You know, the Bible says if we pray, if we stand together and we pray, God will hear us. Hallelujah. But I'm sure God has heard us, isn't it? But you know, let me tell you, even if God has heard us, there will be a sign. God will give you a sign. Hallelujah. Give me a sense of topography, yeah. geography, because obviously you're sitting in a car right now for this interview. It's hammering yeah. down outside. Give me a sense of what you're dealing with. What does it look like around you? Yeah, yeah. It's, we've been, um, we've been, sorry, let me just. No, so the conditions we've been um, walking, obviously, in the in the river, in the water, um, 
uh, ch chest high most of it as well. And um, yeah, the 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 vast um, area of the flood has been quite. It's it's big, so it's debris everywhere. It's clothes everywhere. It's actually appliances lying around, cars lying around on their roofs. Um, it's just it's it. Yes, you can see on the pictures there. But mm. we've had cars washed down the river about three k's down, and um, we found some bodies in the cars. But um, a lot of those people are still missing. What are we advising people to not make your life more difficult? Because often people come to these areas to try and, and find their loved ones. They try and see if family members are in danger. But, Teresa, you and I know that actually just makes your job more difficult, doesn't it? It, it actually does. We advise the, the community. We've had a few... Um, we've actually had a few um, of the community members that have been walking on the wide edges of the the river um in a safer area but then we we do advise the community to let us do the searching especially with the water flowing it's very it's very dangerous Six people have passed away and 10 people reported to be missing uh, Vusi Kumalo SABC news reporter is standing by for us in the Midlands very good afternoon to you Vusi we spoke to you earlier and you spoke to a family member who said members of his family were missing. Just give us an update on the latest on the situation there. Yes, it's such a huge uh, devastation. It's actually a trail of destruction that was left here after the storms wreaked havoc in this area of uh, Ladysmith. Uh, the numbers that has been confirmed is that six people have been confirmed dead and and 10 more are still uh, missing uh, just a short while ago we saw a number of people coming from areas such as Rosbaum who have been uh, taking it upon themselves uh, to look for their loved ones along the streams and rivers of the uh, uh, Ladysmith or Mnambiti area. Uh, quite a number of, of people are still very much concerned and we also spoke to the mayor of uh, Alfred Duma municipality, uh, Mr. Zama CBC, uh, who did uh, say that they are concerned and also their I mean, resources have been uh, stretched uh, because they have been on the ground since this uh, tragedy struck on the Christmas Eve, resulting in the rivers and streams uh, to flow, overflow onto the N1 and also other nearby areas and also uh, the areas that are adjacent and also found on the periphery of the rivers and streams, some of the houses were swept out, away. And also perhaps, if I, may, if I may also step out of the shot so that Ubabu Japan Matibula, uh, we can uh, show you uh, the household uh, which had about uh, three people, but you're going to get more details uh, from the owner of this area who has survived uh, this uh, ordeal. If I can ask her to join me, uh, her name is Petro Duploy, who is also the survivor of the flood uh, that took place. Just take us through about what, what is it uh, that you saw on the eve, on the Christmas Eve that resulted in the death of one of the family members here. Yes, hello. Unfortunately, three of our tenants passed away. The little girl's body has been found, but the dad and the little boy is still missing. And it's been devastating news for us. It happened so fast. The people mostly were still sleeping. And then the, it was raining extremely hard, about 140 millimeters per hour. And the next minute, it looked like a wave that came from the spread side. And apparently a dam broke higher up and that's what caused the flash flood and within a few minutes the people weren't even able to get out of their flats the water started up with seeping in the door and within a minute or two it was about at their hip high and everybody just clung to anything they could do the park homes were swept away with the force of the water somebody that tried to help someone passed away doing that the father with the two children was swept away when they tried to get to safety and it's heartbreaking because you cannot replace that earthly stuff you can replace our income that we've lost we can build it up again but life you cannot replace 
but with God's grace, we'll pick up, stand up and carry on. Mm. I'm so sorry, ma'am, to hear about this. And perhaps how are others coping after this devastation? I must say the community and the friends of people has been extraordinary. Everybody came out of nowhere offering help, offering people to sleep for the night. Even after that, there's still some of my tenants sleeping with people they don't even know. It's just the community that came together and helped everybody. Everybody is asking what they can donate and what they can do to help. It's something beautiful to see within the disaster that we are having at the moment. But most of the people have been helped by family friends. The LMDOT Foundation has been here all the time asking what they can do, promising uh, mattresses, blankets and food. The Lions, have, from early the morning, the Lions Club organized food. Um, Renegade Property Christopher, he, offered, he just came here with parcels with food for everyone. And I must say we're amazed at the response of the community standing together. Doesn't matter if you know each other or not. They stood together and helped. Mm. And perhaps also the deceased was also in one of the park homes. How many park homes uh, do you have here and how many others who survived? We've got 10 park homes. Luckily, most of the tenants went home for the Christmas holiday. But we've got 10 park homes and then we've got the flats in the other building that's still standing. But the water swept through it a meter and a half, a meter and a half high. They've lost everything, clothes, everything. All together we've got 58 tenants staying here and those 58 have lost everything. Pots, pans, curtains, furniture. They've lost, they only had what they had on. Some people were looking for their vehicle papers this morning that was swept away. There's just, you cannot describe what it's like if you haven't been through something like this. You think you haven't got a lot of stuff, even though you've worked hard to accumulate it, but it was swept away in minutes and you feel naked, you feel you don't know what to do next, but you've just got to stand together, get up, build together and carry on. Previously we've been here when uh, we recover, we were covering um, the stories of the Mnambi Toleri Smith, the town being flooded yes. and every time there's uh, flooding, the, the town is almost, I mean, every time it's just flooded, yes. every time when there's not even much rain. Uh, but this area, which is not very far from town, is it the first time uh, that you are experiencing such a massive devastation of this nature? Yes, for sure. It's the first time that it's happened since we've had the property. And um, CBD usually floods um, that's close to the bank of the Clip River. But we are at the Bell Sprite, and there's also another small sprite going that side. But it's the first time that we've had this amount of water coming through. Usually CBD is covered, that's about only four kilometers from here. Usually they flood it, but we've never had this kind of flooding here. Thanks a lot for your time. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks. Um, as I'm stepping out of the shot, uh, letting Japan Matebola just to give you a glimpse of the situation, a trail of destruction here, a number of people are still uh, missing following these floods that claim the lives of six people and ten more are still being searched by the search and recovery a team led by the K-9 units from SEPS as well as other organizations, the humanitarian organization are also here, Al-Imdad Al organization, which is also as a deploy, petrol deploy, Jit Benke mentioned that uh, they are here also making their attempts uh, to help those in need, especially with some of the necessities such as the food, blankets and mattresses, uh, especially for those who were also staying in these park homes. As we heard that uh, she has got uh, 10 park homes uh, and some of those have been completely